What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is your boy, Codexual, aka Hactual, and today we're going to be talking about setting up a load balance and or a failover IP. Um, just a quick... Um, quick uh, FYI if you want to actually pause this video and you want to look at the official um, tutorial guidelines uh, links will be posted in the description down below so you you don't necessarily have to watch this video but I just thought I would let you know that I'm using this as a reference okay so what is load balancing uh, load balancing is the um, features improves the distribution and balancing of the broadband connections between multiple networks links to maximize the throughput and to minimize latency. The redundancies can also be ensured uh, when having a failover feature. Load balancing is using uh, stime, stime, simultaneously both broadband connections through and to WAN ports, offering the ability to utilize both connections. Link aggregation is not supported. Uh, the failover is mainly used when aiming to be uh, connected using the only primary connection and use the secondary uh, broadband connection only when the primary is filled. Uh, this may be helpful for path sensitive uh, connections such as v VoIP, VPN traffic. Um, so yeah, basically if a failover, um, what the failover is, if WAN 1 dies out, then it'll go make sure, hey, WAN 2, are you up and running? All right, cool. Give me the internet. So that's what failover is. Load balancing basically just bonds these two ne uh, two networks, and it can essentially double your internet speed as well. So let's go ahead and set up our um, load balancing and set up a failover IP. So if we go to our router here and go to WAN, uh, you want to make sure your WAN 2 is enabled and have the uh, network provisioned. Um, I'm not going to click on WAN2 because it has sensitive information such as a, a PPOE, which it requires a username and password. So I'm not going to click on that. But um, make sure it's enabled and provisioned. Then once it's provisioned, um, we want to go towards our global settings and you'll see local routing policy. Now there's only two options and uh, we're going to be creating more options. So. And we're also going to be ta uh, going towards to LAN and hit the edit button and routing policy right here. And there's only two options. So um, between global settings and LAN, it's either if this does not work, then we need to make sure that LAN does. So it's either it's like one works or the other doesn't. It's weird how it's set up. But nonetheless, let's go towards our routing and we're going to go towards the policy routing. Then we're going to add a member, multiple of them actually. So we're going to call this WAN1, and we're going to have it with the interface one and with metric one and weight one. Um, then go towards uh, add again, WAN2. Then make sure it's under the interface WAN2 and uh, metric one and weight one. Then we're going to go to our policy. We're going to hit add. Then we're going to type it in with load balance. Then we're going to add WAN1 and add WAN2. So now that we created the definition um, for load balance, so it's bonding these two networks. And let's go ahead and set up a failover IP. So uh, we're going to call it fail one with uh, the interface um, WAN1, metrics one, and weight one, and fail, uh, fail two. With interface WAN2, then we're going to change the metrics to two and wait one. So with the metrics, um, members within one policy with a lower uh, metric has a precedence over the higher metric members. And as for the weight, uh, members with the same metric will distribute load uh, based on the weight value. So basically, um, what it's saying is um, if ISP1 or if WAN1 slash ISP one, if it doesn't have internet, then it'll say, hey, does number two work? Then as soon as the internet is back up, it goes back to number one because that's how it's defined. So then we're going to go back to policy here and we're going to click on add. Then we're going to call it failover. Then we're going to add fell one and fell two. And we're going to hit save. Now we're going to hit apply. So it will apply those changes. And it's reloading all the services. Okay, 
So now we can go back to our WAN, go back to global settings, and now we can see we created load balance and fell over. So we're going to go ahead and make sure we save as uh, load balance. And as for our LAN, um, let, let's let's go ahead and just uh, save this. Uh, we're not going to mess with the LAN just yet, so let's just save what uh, we changed. And let's go to our overview, and I'm going to do a speed test. I'm not going to show the speed test because it actually shows the IP address. So now it's pulling in data from WAN 1. So um, when I was talking about with the global settings and the LAN, how it was a little bit funky. So it, um, when we save the change on this, it should have bonded the two networks, but however, it did not. So if we go to LAN uh, over here and go towards our um, edit page and click on load balancing, now it's officially bonded the two networks once we hit apply. And once we uh, go back to the overview here and we run another speed test, you're going to see WAN 1 and WAN 2 to start pulling in data. Yep, see now you see the graph is coming through and the um, um, data. So it's weird how it has two different settings. So if we go to the WAN, go back to global, if this does not work for you, then go to the LAN then hit the edit page and make sure the routing policy uh, is um, selected with load balance. So now both of our network is combined. What if we want just to fell over IP? Let's go ahead and just go back towards our WAN settings and choose fell over and uh, go to the LAN as well. I'm, I'm, I just do both just because even though that the global settings doesn't really work, I still have it. Uh, predefined with the policy or not the 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 routing policy on both on the WAN global settings and the LAN. Hit save, hit apply, and now if we go back to the overview and if I run another speed test, now it's pulling data from WAN one. Now again, if um, if WAN one slash ISP one if that dies out. Um, meaning if there was an outage or if it got hit offline or what, whatever reason, there's no internet on WAN 1, it's going to start pulling internet from WAN 2. Now, if we go back, um, uh, be before I even continue with that, uh, just with fell over IP, it just gives you that, um, um, that, uh, that connection of, um, I forgot what I was about to say. So fell over IP is more focused on just one connection versus having both connections because if WAN 1 has a data package of unlimited data and WAN 2 has, I don't know, uh, 50 gigs as a data plan, then you basically want to use fell over so you can still have that uh, hotspot as a backup or if you're using that WAN as a backup, um, WAN 2 as a backup, that is. So... Um, that's how I should have mine set up, but I'm using load balancing so I can still have um, the two networks and double my speed. So there's a difference between that. So load balancing merges the uh, connections, doubling your speed, and uh, the fell over IP is it uses one internet connection, and if one fails, then it will revert uh, all the connections to the second ISP. Um, so I just want to clarify on that. Um, I probably did that. I probably said that multiple times already. Um, I'm going to go back to load balance and uh, I'm going to hit save. And there's one last thing I want to talk about. So with load balance, um, it still acts as a fell over IP. Um, so if one connection still goes down, the other connection still remains up. Uh, if you have any questions about that, um, so it still acts as a fell over IP, but you know, just one internet connection is down, so it's just using the other one as well. But the load balance still uses both connections. I hope that makes sense. Um, let's go ahead and apply and just, just do one last speed test. We're basically done with the video. Um, go to WAN here or the overview here and just do another speed test so you can see WAN one and WAN two. Uh, being utilized, but yeah, we're we're basically done. This is how you um, link the uh, connections with uh, load uh, 
load balance and fell over IP. I hope that this video was informative and helpful. If it was, go ahead and drop a like, uh, share the video, subscribe. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I'll try to get back to you. If you need any technical support, it's only supported on the Discord. Um, don't uh, come uh, uh, asking me questions on social media. I ignore my DMs, so I only do technical support on the Discord. And uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching. Protect your privacy and identity. Unlock sensor filters. If you're trying to get to a no-no site or you just want to be anonymous, whatever your reasonings are, you can connect to the VPN tunnels within seconds by using private internet access. Links are in the description. It's so low. Like the the it, the cost is so low. If you're not able to afford for this, then you know you're just broke as just as I am because I'm trying to get affiliates ads going on. Yeah, this is a sponsored video, by the way. Um, VPN features and look at all these great features: uh, secured VPN account, encrypted Wi-Fi, peer-to-peer -peer support, and so on and so forth. And you can connect to 33 different countries, and there's a lot of servers to go around. Plus, there's a fast download. I use this for myself as well when I try to get to those no-no sites. Yeah, okay, let's go back to the continued content and thank you for the support. Links in the description. Thank you for sticking around. Please feel free to watch my other videos. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, follow my social media. If you're feeling generous, check out my Patreon or send in a donation of any amount with PayPal. It really helps out with post-production, equipment, food in my belly, and also continue making free content for you guys. Links in the description. Y'all take care and thank you once again.